the second of the videos where I'm documenting my Overland trailer build. The last video, we took it out for the first time, my son and I, and I showed you around the trailer a little bit, talked about why I decided to build this type of trailer, um, and a bit about sort of the different components of the trailer, the tent, the cargo box, the uh, jacks, stabilizer jacks, things like that. In this second video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the design process and then the design and build of the actual frame for the trailer and the suspension and wheels. And I might get into the cargo box. We'll see how far I get. If not, I'll do that in the, the next video. In this video, I'll use a lot of footage that I shot while I was actually building the trailer. So it's a little bit of a flashback in time. I think that'll give you an idea of kind of what I was thinking, the problems I ran into, maybe some tips that I've since forgotten as I was, you know, moved along through to the, the different steps. You can build a trailer like this using a pre-existing uh, trailer frame and suspension and wheels. There are some companies that, like Harbor Freight has a trailer frame, a utility trailer frame that's been popular. Um, there's some others out there. You know, a lot of times what people do is use that base frame and then put a, a heavier duty like leaf springs and bigger wheels on it for to make it off-road capable. That was one thing I wanted to do. I wanted my trailer to have larger tires and be capable of going off-road, um, having clearance. So, because I'm going to drive it with my Jeep, and so it has to go all the places that my Jeep would go. You actually can save yourself a lot of time buying a pre-built frame. Uh, there is a company, which I mentioned before, called Denute, uh, Compact Camping Concepts. I think I called it Compact Camping Systems before, but I think it's Compact Camping Concepts. Um, they actually sell pre-built uh, frames that are designed for different types of tubs that they sell. So they sell like a, you know, a tub based on old military trailers and one that's um, just a little more like a more of a square uh, cargo tub. Um, you can actually buy just a frame from them and use that. They also have axles and suspension. So if you're looking to cut down on the amount of time and labor that it's going to take to build a trailer like this, um, you might want to look into that. I actually talked to them and thought about using one of their frames, but the lead time they were running behind, I think because of the pandemic and the trouble getting materials. So it was going to be like six months before they get me a frame and I wanted to get started before then. So I decided just to build one myself. Um, I kind of modeled the frame off of a number of uh, trailer frames that I saw on you know, commercially built trailers, that tr the frames that Denute uh, builds. You know, I just kind of did my research and looked at what, what looked like frames that were built out of two inch square steel tubing, which is what I was planning to use. Um, once I had the design, which I, side note on design, I didn't use anything fa fancy. You know, you could use SketchUp or some other CAD program. And I started to do that, but I realized I was going to be changing it so much at first. You know, I was really like taking things and melting, repouring, you know, crumpling up the paper and throwing it out. So it would have been really time consuming, I think, to do it in a CAD program at first. So I just did it on graph paper. I had just plain old graph paper with some pencils and rulers and you know those compasses that draw circles and I just I did it all with that and that's all all I ever needed for design tools. The frame of the trailer is really the the base the wheels attached to that you know essentially if you think about it the trailer is just the frame and the wheels and then that gets connected well the frame the suspension and the wheels and then that gets connected to the vehicle and towed along. You can put anything you want on top of that frame, that base frame, but you got to get the frame right and the suspension and the wheels right so that you're set up for success. There are a few different parameters for how you design a frame. One of them is the 60-40 rule. What that says is that, okay, you take the entire length of the trailer from the very back to the tip of the trailer tongue. The wheels should be 60% of the way back from the tongue of the trailer to the back. So, and the 40% of the trailer should be behind the wheels. The reasoning for this is it puts more of the weight on the front, in front of the wheels is the idea, which means, which makes the trailer more stable. If you have a lot of weight behind the wheels, you can imagine, you know, if the trailer's like this, the wheels are back here, 
um, when it bounces up and down, it's going to tend to, the front's going to stay down. But if you put the wheels further forward, when it bounces, it's going to start doing this, which makes the trailer unstable. The other rule is that the distance from the tip of the trailer tongue to the wheels should be roughly the wheelbase of your vehicle. This just makes it easier to drive the vehicle around to back it up and things of that nature. While these are helpful guidelines, they're not set in stone. Many modern trailers, especially overlanding trailers, tend to be fairly short in back. This gives them a better departure angle so they don't hang up on obstacles on the trail. One of the parameters for my trailer was that it needed to fit inside my garage. So it really couldn't be as long as the 60-40 rule or the matching the wheelbase rule would dictate. Once I had my frame design completed, including accounting for the placement of the suspension and wheels, I started to fabricate the frame. This required cutting steel tubing, preparing it for welding, and welding the members together into a complete frame. Working with mild steel tubing and metalwork in general requires some specialty tools. I won't go into detail on the tools here. I've put information on them in the article on ordealist.com and I'll put links in the description below in case you are looking to source some. Three metal working tools that are very handy are a MIG welder, a chop saw, and an angle grinder. So today I managed to get most of the frame welded together. I've been working on it, gosh, maybe three, four hours. Uh, first I tacked it together and then I um, started doing the full wel welds. Um, so, so far so good. It looks pretty square. That's the main thing. I've got the uh, axle of suspension. So the Timbrens, they really need a really square frame. And if you want to you know, if you want them to work right and not tear up your tires when you're out on the road, you have to make sure everything's really square. So I've been after every little weld, I've been checking with a uh, speed square, making sure the angles are all still 90 degrees. And um, yeah, so far so good. Um, take me probably gonna take me the full day to get it welded up. And then after that, I'm gonna work on putting the axles on, the timbrens on. That'll be the next step. Exciting. So I got the base of the axle of suspension on, which you can see there, right here. It's the what, left side, this is the right side. And these just mount down here on the side with some bolts. The next step is to finish up these hubs here. You can see the brake hubs. These are magnetic brake hubs. Um, I actually messed up one of the bearings, uh, bearing seals when I was putting the hub down here together. You can see the outer part. So inside here, this is the cap, but inside here are the bearings. And when I was putting, I don't think I, oh, I, don't think I have one handy. When I was putting the seal in, I drove it too far in um, and damaged it. Actually, I damaged it getting it back out. So now I need to get a new um, new bearing seal. And then after that, I will put those bad boys together and then I will mount them onto the axles 
And I'm actually going to flip it over then, and I'll get to see it up on, oh, and put the wheels on it, and um, then I'll get to see it up on wheels for the first time. That's it for this video. I will put a link to uh, the articles on ordealist.com that correspond to this par part of the build. Um, they go into more detail, so they'll probably be helpful. Um, I'll also uh, put links to the various tools and parts that I use so that if you need to source them, you can just go online and get them. In the next video, I'll talk about how after I had the frame built and the wheels on and the suspension, how I built the cargo box that goes on top of the frame and uh, attach the fenders to that cargo box. I may also get into the how I skin the frame with aluminum. Um, that might be another video, though. I, that, that's a lot. So that's probably going to be the fourth video. Yeah, fourth video in the series. So next one will be the cargo box and the um, fenders. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.